Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. I'm back to our Going Through the Bible series. We are now in the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament. So open your Bibles. Please open your Bibles at Leviticus uh, chapter 19, verse 18. That's the book of Leviticus um, chapter 19, verse 18. All right. So we read. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against the fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. God bless you in this word. Loving your neighbor. So the background here is this is the third book written by Moses, and uh, God provides his holy laws. They are part of the uh, what is called sundry laws. Sundry laws just basically means various or different laws. So um, they're part of the, uh, God's different holy laws. And the context here is holiness and personal conduct. In other words, do not versus do, right? Those commandments. So do not versus do. So the do's and don'ts, basically, of God. And... Um, this is the first time uh, God requires this specific command, as we just read in the opening verse. So the topic here is uh, basically Moses uh, um, records God, um, recording God's holy laws and what it means to love your neighbor. So let's look at this verse a little bit more closely. So in verse 18, it says, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. So um, it's not just Israelites, but all of us, uh, Christians, believers, followers of Jesus, we are called uh, to love our neighbor as ourselves. So there are very clear laws that God commands us. So when God says at the end, I am the Lord, that's his divine, uh, eternal name, his signature, so to say, uh, this expresses God's existence and his divine authority. So there's a link here that brings us right into the New Testament with Jesus. And Christ helps us understand uh, how to put this law into practice and how important it is for us as believers. So um, in a related way, there's what is often called the golden rule, right? The golden rule. If you go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, what we often call the, it's a man-made title, right? Just an insert, the golden rule. Um, Jesus says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. God bless the U.S. word. But Jesus does not end there, right? So the verse we just read from Leviticus brings us to Jesus' main commandment. And we find it recorded in three different Gospels. So let's read. In Matthew 22, 30, 36 to 40, and Jesus um, is uh, responding here. So somebody, person asked Jesus, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. In Mark 12, 28, 31, we read, One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered well, so he asked, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most commandment is this, listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. God bless you, you must word. And in Luke 10, 25 to 28, again, it's the same expressed in a different way. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do 
to inherit eternal life. Jesus replied, What does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. God bless the reading of his word. And then Jesus gives the best example of putting this commandment into practice. And we read here in Luke 10, 29 to 37. It's a bit longer, so just bear with me here. It's a very important passage. It's called the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, you've heard it probably, maybe, hopefully. Let's read it together. So Luke chapter 10, 29 to 37. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes, now go and do the same. God bless you, his word. So, what does it mean for you to love your neighbor? It means asking this question. Ask yourself this question. If my freedom impedes another person's freedom, is it still freedom? If my freedom impedes or interferes with another person's freedom, is it still freedom? The Bible is clear here. The answer is no. So that's part of loving our neighbor, right? It's something we pray for that people do, all of us, that we would do that. But there's more to it, right? There's also not to seek revenge or holding a grudge against others, right? As we read in our opening passage. Why? The Apostle Paul helps us here and reminds us in Romans 12, 19, Romans chapter 12, 19 to 21. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil. By doing good. God bless the reading of his word. Let's reread that again. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So as Christians, we understand this command is part of God's holiness, right? Which he calls us to, to uh, follow and imitate him too. We're not God. God is God. We are we as creation. But it's, it's part of God's holiness expressed here, which we also read in Galatians. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 5, verse 14, For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, Love your neighbor as yourself. God bless you, your word. So Jesus has fulfilled the law, including this specific law in himself. So as we are in Christ, as Christ's followers, and follow the, this command he gives us, we are within God's will. Right? And and that is where he God wants us to be as a loving Heavenly Father. Right? So we're right within God's will to follow this command. Um love your neighbor 
as yourself. May God bless you and keep you.